Welcome back to another Madden 20 rebuild I have for you guys here today. Today it's going to be a realistic rebuild of the Kansas City Chiefs. Obviously this team does not need a rebuild, but you know, doing some of these really good teams is still very fun. All right, so let's just start going over the team here. So of course we have Patrick Mahomes, 99 overall, 23 years old. He is ridiculously good. I don't even think I have to talk about him all that much. It's very obvious if you just watch him play just for a little while, you can just see how breathtaking he actually is with the football. Patrick Mahomes is incredible one of the few 99 overalls in this game and he certainly deserves it Damian Williams I did not know he was up to an 85 overall he's actually not too bad but they did go out and draft Clyde Edwards Alaire but they went out and drafted him in the late first round seems like a good selection he's a good running back for sure now I don't know if he's gonna start the first season to be completely honest I might just roll with Damian Williams for a little while but I would not mind having Alaire come in at some point down the line. Hopefully he can develop for us behind Damian Williams. Number one receiver, we do have Tyreek Hill, one of the fastest players in the game, if not the fastest player right now. He's a very good receiver. Like he's not just speed though. He can catch very well. He has good route running ability. Deep route running is phenomenal from him. Miko Hardman, not too much slower to be honest. 96 speed, I think from him. He's a very good rookie as well. So we can hopefully build him up to be just like Tyreek Hill one day. That'd be really nice. Sammy Watkins is the number three and I know he's very very expensive so I don't know if he's going to be you know in the long term for this team Sammy Watkins isn't too bad but he's not that great either like I don't think he's worth 21 million dollars next year I may try to trade him heading into this next season because you know the first two receivers are the most important ones here in Madden and I don't want to pay a third receiver that much money uh, the offensive line definitely has some work to be done to it. Duvernay Tardif is not too bad at right guard, and then Mitchell Schwartz is one of the best tackles in the game right now. 93 overall for him. The issue with him is that he is old, but I think we can keep him on the team for the next couple seasons for sure. Eric Fisher, Mike Remmers, Austin Ryder. They're not too good. <laughs> None of them really at all um, are particularly good. I mean, Eric Fisher's is 74. I guess that's not terrible, but we definitely should replace those guys at some point in the near future. Travis Kelsey, one of the best tight ends in football, 96 overall for him. He is very good. On the defensive side, then Tyron Matthew is the starting strong safety, and I feel like his development should certainly be superstar. Tyron Matthew is a really, really good, versatile player. He is great for the Chiefs here. He's been good his entire career, really, whenever he's been healthy. But Tyron Matthew is a freak. I think he should at least have superstar development. Juan Thornhill is the starting free safety. He's going to be a rookie for us here out of Virginia. He has a lot of potential for us. He at least has star development, so that's really nice to have. Cornerbacks aren't too good on this team, but honestly, if at some point I do draft a safety who I'm comfortable starting, I can always move Tyron Matthew down to corner because he can play down there very, very well. But we do have a Charvarius Ward at the number one cornerback position. He's still very young. Hopefully he can go up in development for us throughout the course of the rebuild. And then Rashad Breland is the number two cornerback. He's not too bad either, but I don't really want him on the team long term. I am certainly looking to upgrade our cornerback in this offseason. On the defensive line, we have Frank Clark, Derek Nadi, Chris Jones, and Alex Okafor. We also have Breland Speaks down here, and he has star development. So I think he's going to start over Okafor, actually, because he has a lot more potential. Hopefully he can go up in development and go off for us here. Now for Chris Jones, I don't know what to do with him because in real life they tagged him. I don't know if they plan on bringing him back long term or not. I might just do it because Chris Jones is so good and I really don't want to not have him on the team. Anyway, though, we do have Damian Wilson at right outside linebacker. We have Anthony Hitchens at middle linebacker. How old is he now? He's 27, so we should definitely look for a different linebacker. But then we have Willie Gay Jr. at left outside linebacker. I gave him star development. I didn't mention this either, but I gave Alaire star development as well. I think that's fair for both of those guys. Honestly, I probably didn't even need to give Willie Gay star development because he's bound to go up anyway, just because he's a linebacker and he's a rookie. That's usually what happens. I think Dorian O'Daniel will get significant play time here for us though I'd rather have him play than Damian Wilson because Damian Wilson isn't too great and he's 26 years old I think I'm gonna have O'Daniel start at right outside linebacker he is currently the backup sub linebacker so he's going to be in quite a bit but yeah I mentioned this near the beginning of the video this team is still very good I feel like they're gonna be good almost regardless of who they have just because of Patrick Mahomes and like Tyreek Hill Travis Kelsey those guys are so good on their own and then on defense Tyron Matthews is a very good player Chris Jones is a really good player so this team is gonna be good 
I think, for a long while until maybe they have to pay Patrick Mahomes and then maybe they can't bring back some of these other guys. But I feel like Mahomes can still just carry a team into the playoffs just based on ability. But anyway, that's the team. I'm going to start simulating now. I'm going to make one small switch here on the offensive line. I'm going to have Lucas Nyang start at left guard just because he is a rookie. I'd much rather have him there than Mike Remmers. I'm going to try something else out as well. So on offense, I'm going to throw in a layer on some of these formations. Just to see if you can get some more touches that way then. Okay, so I just made a couple changes to the draft class based on your comments on my last rebuild. So let me know again in the comments if you want me to change anything about this draft class because I want to make it as realistic as possible. But don't pay attention to the colleges because Trevor Lawrence, it says he went to NA. Same thing with Xavier Thomas. That happens just whenever you mess with players. I didn't even mess with those guys. It's just like whenever you edit any kind of player, it'll just mess up the colleges of some random guys. So don't pay attention to that, but let me know if you think people should be added or changed or anything like that. I also realized that I never changed my coach. My bad. So let me go make a new coach. Sorry, Andy Reid, you're gone. But let me go back on the Chiefs and think of some coach name. Okay, there we go. That's the best possible coach name I could come up with. But anyway, at week nine, the team is five and three. Okay, so we're playing well. We are on top of the AFC West. Three, four, and one for the Broncos. Three and four for the Raiders. Two, five, and one for the Chargers. But let's just take a quick look at how the team is developing and potential development traits. But I'm sure you guys already know what all these development traits are. Mikol Hardman has a star development. He's up to a 78. Edwards Allaire is also up to a 78 with another experience point. And then defensively, Juan Thornhill has star development. He's up to a 79. Willie Gay really didn't play enough or is it just glitched? Okay, I think it's just glitched. That's fine. But let's see who we have to bring back to the team. Of course, Chris Jones is going to be here. And I don't know what to do about this. I think I will give Chris Jones another contract. Never mind, I don't think I can. So I guess I won't be giving him another contract. I don't want to let Chris Jones go, but I don't really have the money to bring him back right now. Let me see if I can release some players from the team, because I do want him back, but I don't know if he's going to come back to the Chiefs at the end of the season. You never know. Oh, Frank Clark, I forgot how big his contract is. That is remarkable. Okay, Eric Fisher is a player I don't want either. I don't think I'm going to be able to gut him right now. Yeah, it makes no sense. We'll have to cut him at some point in the future. So Sammy Watkins is a guy I want to cut at some point as well. Anthony Hitchens is making so much money. So this is a season where we really can't go after anybody. Because I want a lot of these people here, and the players who I can cut, it's not really worth it to. We can try to make it work with other people, I guess. Maybe we can draft a defensive tackle. So sadly, no Chris Jones. But okay, I'll see you at the end of the year. Actually, we do have a breakout player. It's Sammy Watkins. I don't really think I'm going to have him on the team long term anyway, but I'll still activate this. It'd be cool if he can get it done, I guess. Sammy Watkins did not do what he needed to do. That's fine, though. I'll see you guys at the end of the year. At least we won that game. Okay, so I fully expect this team to be in the playoffs right now, and we are. We got a first round bye. We finished 10 and 6 this season. Okay, clearly on top of the AFC West. Patrick Mahomes actually had a pretty bad year by his standards. 3,802 yards, 29 touchdowns, 9 interceptions. Not that spectacular. Damian Williams was really good though. 4.3 yards per carry, 15 rushing touchdowns. I really want Alaire to play at some point, but I don't know if he's going to get a chance to. Damian Williams just went off. Mikol Hardman had a good year, almost 1,000 yards. Tyreek Hill, just over 900. Travis Kelsey, over 800 yards. The offensive line actually balled out this year. They didn't let up many sacks and their running backs played well, so it leads me to believe that they ran block well too. We didn't have like any tackles on defense. This is very strange, but Bashad Breland had 89 tackles. He actually leads the team. 14 tackles for loss for Frank Clark, 11 for Willie Gay Jr. We have seven sacks for Frank Clark, who leads the team. We have five picks for Tyron Matthew, two for Charvarius Ward, one for Anthony Hitchens, Willie Gay Jr., and Bashad Breland. Okay, so do we have any touchdowns or anything? We do have a touchdown and we also have a safety. Okay, so we were 11th in the NFL on offense. Defensively then, we were 4th. Okay, so this defense balled out. Love to see that. Matt Ryan won MVP. Interesting to see him up there. Nobody from the Chiefs. That's okay, though. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Ryan Tannehill. Anybody from the Chiefs, we have Patrick Mahomes at number 10 and Blake Bortles at number 9 on the Patriots. That would be quite the resurgence if you went to that team and played well. Defensive Player of the Year is CJ Mosley. Anybody from the Chiefs? No, I don't see anyone. I thought Tyron Matthew potentially could have been up there. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Justin Herbert. We do have Edwards Hilaire, though, at number 7. Right below Marshawn Lynch, who is my favorite rookie, of course. <laughs> Let's check out Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Drew Tranquil. Anybody from the Chiefs? We have Willie Gay Jr. at number 8. Okay. So we advanced by the week, and now we have to go up against the Tennessee Titans. Okay, let me just spend all these experience points. I'm just going to auto-upgrade the team. And let's see if we can take them down. The Titans are really good in this game. 
I'm actually using their offensive playbook, so we're going to see which offense is better. I feel like we should win this game, but I don't think we will, to be honest. The Titans are borderline unstoppable in this game, and we actually beat them, 42-28. to But now we have to go up against a team who is absolutely unstoppable, the Cleveland Browns. They're an 85 overall. This is going to be incredibly difficult, but let's go into the Super Bowl, and let's see if we can make it. We are actually in the Super Bowl. Okay, so we have to go up against the Dallas Cowboys. Since this is just the first season, I'm just going to simulate straight through this one. I'm not going to hop in. But it would be cool if we can win a Super Bowl year one, but I really didn't do anything. So it doesn't even really affect me all that much if we win. And we are going to lose. 42 to 17. That's kind of sad, but it's okay. Let's see who we have to bring back, even though we have no money. Chris Jones, I really want back on the team. It's just not possible. I can't go after anybody in free agency either. So this means Anthony Sherman, I don't think, can come on the team. No, that's not going to be possible. Okay, so I literally cannot bring back a single player. But next season, I'm going to have to go through and cut a lot of guys. So I'll see you guys in the draft here. All right, so we're going to have the second last pick in the draft, of course. We have the 31st overall pick. But let's advance by picks one through five, and let's see who other teams take. The Dolphins are going to take Penn Sewell number one overall. The 49ers are going to go with Gregory Russo. The Jaguars, do they take Trevor Lawrence? They do not. They go cornerback. The Rams are going to go with Xavier Thomas. And then the Broncos, who do they decide to go with? Samuel Cosme. So I don't know why Trevor Lawrence falls this frequently. It makes no sense to me. But let's see who's available at pick number 31. I'm not going to trade up or anything. Paulson Adiba would have actually been a good selection. I was thinking about taking him. I could go receiver. Rondell Moore is available. I almost just want him just because of how insane that would be. But I could really use a defensive tackle of some sort. So Niles Pinckney looks decent. Mid-second round talent. I don't know if I want him then. I'm thinking about taking Sean Wade as well. Early second round talent. He would definitely start for us. And we do need cornerback help for sure. Jacoby Stevens would be a good strong safety. I could go with him to start at strong safety and then move Tyron Matthew. That honestly might be a better move because Tyron Matthew can play wherever, man. He's so good. Rondell Moore is so enticing. I really want Rondell Moore on the team. Just because we get a ridiculous wide receiver core then. But the thing is, like, I kind of want a different receiver for this team. I wanted, like, a bigger receiver since we already have small, fast guys on the team. I know Rondell Moore is incredible, though. I feel like Chiefs fans are going to be upset with me if I don't take him. But there are other options later as well. I'm just going to say screw it. We're going to go with Rondell Moore. We're going to get the best receiving core in the NFL in a couple seasons. There we go. Welcome to the team. He's a 76 overall hidden development rate. This would be a nutty receiving core. 96 speed for him, 96 speed for Mikael Hardman, and then 99 speed for Tyreek Hill. He is incredibly good. Rondell Moore is such a great player. He should probably even be moved up in this draft class because I can see him going like top 10 for sure because he's an incredibly good receiver. The thing is, though, this next receiving class is ridiculously stacked as well. So you never really know what's going to happen. Now I do need some secondary help and we can go with Eric Stokes. He's not too bad. Mid third round projection. I also still need a defensive tackle, but I have none of those guys scouted. The only thing is like I know this guy is hidden development trait. <laughs> so I don't really want to take him just because of that. Like, I feel like that's kind of cheap. I think instead I'm going to go with Monty Rice because if I take him, I could potentially cut Anthony Hitchens and then I'm going to have a player, you know, who can play instead of Hitchens. So welcome to the team. He's a 71 overall normal development, ranked exactly where we took him. He can definitely start for us next season if we no longer have Hitchens on the team. Okay, now in the late third round, I don't know who to take here really. Alaric Jackson wouldn't be a bad selection, I don't think. I don't remember exactly what his overall is, so I might actually go with him because we do need some sort of offensive lineman and I don't know who to take. Like, none of these guys are scouted. I think I'm just going to take a shot in the dark and go with Alaric Jackson. He's a 64, so he's really not good. I was hoping he'd be closer to a 70. Maybe he could have started somewhere then, but it's okay. Let's go to the fourth round. I wish I had some money to spend in free agency because I could have upgraded this team really well if that were the case. Um, but so let's see who we want here. Maybe we can take some sort of defensive back now. There are a couple guys here on the draft board who look okay. I could actually use a cornerback to start, I think. So Elijah Molden, I'm going to get with him. He looks like the best defensive back left and he's a 67. He's not too bad though. He actually might be our third corner, which is pretty funny. Unless I can muster up some money to spend in free agency here before the season begins, I think he might actually start. But I'm just going to simulate to the end of the draft because I have like no one scouted, so I don't really care who we take. I'm just going to let the computer decide that. I don't think this draft was too bad. I mean, we got a really, a really solid receiver. We don't really need receiver, but I'm not going to have Sammy Watkins on the team anymore after this year. I think I'm going to try to put him on the trade block now. And even if we don't get any offers for him, I'm probably just going to cut him. So it's not that big of a deal. And then we got a starting caliber linebacker and a couple guys who will be backups, except for that cornerback. He might actually start. We're going to have to look and see. I also kind of forgot to check out development trade upgrades. So let's go ahead and do that. 
So Damian Williams is actually up to star development, but Alaire is up to an 83. Okay, so I think I'm going to have Damian Williams for another season, and then Alaire is going to start after that. That seems like the best scenario for me, but I don't think anyone else here on the offense is up in development. Defensively, how did Tyron Matthew not go up? That is incredible. Um, Willie Gay did not go up in development. Juan Thornhill did not either. That's okay. I didn't really expect those guys to. This defense looks a lot worse now that we don't have Chris Jones. It's very sad, but it's okay. We'll make it work. But let me see. Anthony Hitchens, can I release you yet or no? I cannot release Anthony Hitchens yet, but I don't want him on the team. I certainly want Monty Rice starting, not Ben Nyman. Sorry. I want Monty Rice starting here at middle linebacker. Dorian O'Daniel still going to start at right outside linebacker. That's fine. We have a good young linebacking core. I'm good with all of those guys. And I think we can potentially cut like Alex Okafor maybe. That only frees up a little bit of money, so it's not that big of a deal. We do have Kalen Saunders though who can probably start at defensive tackle number two. I'm good with that. I think we can replace Chris Jones in this offseason pretty easily because Kenny Clark is here sometimes. So if that's the case, we can certainly just go after him. Albert Okwebenham is on the team. That's interesting to see. Now, Sammy Watkins. This is going to free up a lot of money if I release him. It frees up a good bit, but I'm going to throw him on the trade block instead. I don't want to just straight up release him. I want to see if I can get anything from him. Now, there's a couple offensive linemen I wouldn't mind releasing. Eric Fisher, is it worth it to cut you? It is not worth it. We'd still lose some money doing that. Man, some of these contracts are very questionable. I don't really think I can go through and cut anyone. Maybe Daniel Sorensen? That frees up about $2 million. I'll do that because now maybe we can go after a free agent corner. Rasul Douglas is in free agency? Okay, he's only 25. And I still can't go after him. I'm gonna have to free up a lot more money. Okay, so we're just gonna have to bite the bullet here and just, you know, not go after anybody and just rock with this team. I think this team can still make it to the playoffs, but even if we don't, it's not that big of a deal. Like, I think I can replenish this team in the offseason when we have some more money. But the offense is still fantastic, right? We still have Patrick Mahomes. We still have Tyreek Hill. Damian Williams is off a really solid year. Travis Kelsey's still on the team. Rondell Moore joins the squad. Yeah, I think he's gonna be the slot receiver. Miko Harmon played well. But I was hoping he'd go up in development and progress a little bit better at this point. That's why I was still okay going after Rondell Moore. Because maybe Moore can do that. You never know. And then the defensive side, we have a great young linebacking core. I already mentioned them before. We sadly don't have Chris Jones anymore. So the defensive line looks a lot worse. The defense in general looks a lot worse. But Tyron Matthews still here. Uh, the cornerback core is probably the worst part of the defense. But I like the safety duo. And I like most of the defensive line. Breland Speaks is going to start again, though. I'll make sure that's all situated before we simulate. All right, so we actually have some trade offers here for Sammy Watkins. Let's see what we have. A fourth round draft pick this year, a sixth and a seventh next year. A third next year and a seventh next year. Fourth, fifth, seventh. Okay, anything better than a third? We have a bunch of third round draft picks next year. I just got to pick the right one now. I think I'm going to go with the Bills. The Bills are good in this game too, but the Seahawks and the Browns seem to be in the Super Bowl like every other year. So I'm going to go with the Bills. I'm actually giving them back to the Bills. Yeah, I'll do that. Okay, you're going back to the Bills, Sammy Watkins. I'm sorry. Okay, so here at week nine, we are five and two. So the team is still playing well. Looks like we still have control over the division. Okay, so let's see what the team's looking like though. Also, we have to bring back Patrick Mahomes now. That is going to be a massive cap hit, but of course it's going to be worth it. I'm going to try to get him back as best as I can. Rondell Moore, though, has superstar development. It's insane that he fell to us in the draft. I don't know how that even happened. I don't get why teams don't target receiver if there's a bunch of good ones, because there were definitely some teams who could have used him, but whatever. I'll take it. <laughs> I'm not complaining. Um, but the offense is still looking really solid defensively. The team looks like it's progressing quite well. You know, I'm kind of liking where we are right now. I just hope we have enough money to bring in Patrick Mahomes because he's going to ask for one of the biggest contracts of all time. But we're going to give it to him. We'll see if he just wants this straight up. I don't want to raise it or anything. He's coming back to the team for seven more years. $117 million over that time. It's a $266 million total contract. Perfectly fine giving that to him. Now, Damian Williams, I'm actually not going to bring back. He had a really good season a year ago, and he's probably having a good season this year too, but we do have a running back capable of starting after him, so I'm okay with that. Traverius Ward, though, I do want on the team if I can. Five years is not actually too bad for him. I want to save a little bit of money, though, for free agency so I can bring in some players. So I'm not going to go after anybody else here. Lucas Nyang, I should actually give a contract to. I'm going to give him a long-term deal as well, just because he should be a quality starting guard for us for a long time. So let's give him a three-year contract if he wants that. He wants to take a better salary. Okay, I'll give you another contract next week. Let me actually spend my coach experience. I don't know how I forgot to do this. I'm normally pretty good with spending it when I want to, but it's okay. <laughs> I completely forgot to. Let me get the linebacker boost. 
the defensive back boost and the defensive line boost that's fine that should work out okay he's coming back to the team now i raised his salary a little bit and we actually have a breakout player right now i don't know who it is yet it is breland speaks now i don't think he's gonna get this done but if he does he'll go up to superstar which would be really big so he has to get you know two of uh those stats down there let's advance by this week against the bills who are six one and one i guess we shouldn't have traded them sammy watkins it's okay though we lost that game but did he go up in development very much doubt it no he did not go up okay so the season's not looking good right now actually we started off very well but those last two games did not go to plan okay so we made the playoffs but we went seven and nine what a strange record the entire division <laughs> went seven and nine what <laughs> that is the most insane thing i have ever seen okay that's awesome though everyone in the division tied that's incredible Patrick Mahomes, though, still not really playing that well. I expected so much more from him. 4,000 yards, just about 28 touchdowns, 11 interceptions. What is happening? Rushing-wise, Damian Williams is so good. 16 touchdowns, 1,100 yards. I just need Patrick Mahomes to come alive, and this team can almost go undefeated, I'd imagine. Um, but Rondell Moore had a good rookie season. Travis Kelsey had 11 touchdowns. Tyreek Hill, 884 yards. Blocking-wise, the offensive line is very good aside from eric fisher these numbers are incredibly small we have 108 total tackles for monty rice okay we have 13 tackles for loss for derek naughty 11 for willie gay we have nine sacks for frank clark there's a good season from him four picks for tyron matthew two for rashad fenton one for brashad breland charvarius ward and kindle vildor we have a touchdown and a blocked kick but no safeties okay so we were eighth in the nfl on offense defense probably wasn't that strong then we were 31st on defense. Yeah, we were really bad in terms of yardage. Trevor Lawrence went to the Colts and won MVP. That's crazy. If he goes to the Colts in real life, that'll be nuts. But anybody from the Chiefs, I doubt it. Sam Darnold makes it before Patrick Mahomes does. That's kind of insane. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Trevor Lawrence. No disrespect to Sam Darnold, but it's Patrick Mahomes. Come on. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Miles Garrett. Nobody from the Chiefs. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Trevor Lawrence, but Rondell Moore at number three. Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Monty Rice. Okay, maybe that's a development trade upgrade. That would be massive for us. But we have to take on the Titans. Let's see what their overall is. They're an 83. We are an 85. So we do have the advantage, but honestly, I don't think it's going to matter. Let's advance by the week and see if we can beat them. We actually win that game. 28 to 21. Okay, now we have to go up against the Ravens, who are an 88 overall. There's no chance we beat the Ravens. The Ravens are such a good team. So let's go buy this game. Let's see if we can win. It's very doubtful and we do lose 42 to 12. That wasn't even remotely close. All right, so the Bills and the Cardinals are in Super Bowl 55. I think the Bills are going to win this one. 35 to 14, they do win. Now let's check out who went up in development trait. Damian Williams, are you up again? He is not, but he is regressing. So I'm actually happy that we do have another running back who can come in and play. Rondell Moore is, of course, still going to be the number two receiver. Okay. Defensively, then, anybody up in development trade? I don't think so. How is Tyron Matthew not going up, man? What does he have to do? That is insane. But Monty Rice is actually looking really nice. He's going to get two more experience points as well, so he's going to be a 77 overall. But is there anybody just left here who I want back on the team? I don't think so. There's no one here who really gets too much play time, so I'm good letting all of these guys go. And I'm just going to spend my money in free agency here. Hopefully, I can bring in like a defensive tackle. I'd like a cornerback, maybe. I don't know how much we have, though. We have negative cap room again. Okay, hang on a second. Let me see if I can cut some players now. Like Eric Fisher, Anthony Hitchens, these guys are definitely players I don't want on the team anymore. Frank Clark, his contract is so big. I know I said that before. It's just insane. I can cut Eric Fisher, and I think I'm going to. He's 30 years old. I don't want him anymore, man. He's not that good. Anthony Hitchens, I think I'm going to try to release as well if it's possible. I cannot release him just yet. His contract is still so big for no reason. Alex Okafor might be worth it to release as well. It frees up some money. I'm going to try to get as much money as possible here because there are certainly some positions I would like to target if I can. Demarcus Robinson's another player I would like to get rid of if I can. Freeze up a million dollars, but it's worth it. Okay, so let's see if we have any money to spend now. I went through and cut a decent bit of players, but I really just want a defensive tackle. And Kenny Clark is not here. Makes me kind of sad, but Desmond King is. I actually really want Desmond King. He's a good player. Marshawn Lattimore is a player I usually go after, so I don't think I'm going to target him now. Maybe Chidobe Awuzie. He's actually not getting any offers. So I'm going to go after Awuzie first. We have some money to do this. Okay, we can definitely get this done then. So let's give him eight and a half salary and about four signing bonus. That's 85 total points. I'm comfortable giving him that. 
Let's see if I can land a defensive tackle of some sort. So the best one here is Sheldon Rankins, and he's definitely not bad, but I'm not sure if I want him, to be honest. He would be a good player, though. I probably should go after him. Okay, I'm going to try to give Sheldon Rankins a two-year contract. I'm comfortable with that. And now I need some sort of an offensive lineman who is not one of these rookies. So let's just try to find somebody who can play here. I actually might be able to draft one. I think I'll be in a position to do that, but I should get a center. That's for sure. I think it's going to be Alex Mack if I can get him on a small deal. So we got Chidobe Awuzie and we got Sheldon Rankins. That's actually massive for us. We did not end up getting Alex Mack. It's okay. I think there's going to be a center in the draft who I can target, so I'm all right with it. All right, so a spider just crawled across my bed. I think I got him, but we're going to head into the draft. <laughs> we have the 25th overall pick. And this is going to be very offensive lineman heavy, I think, at least, because there's a lot of really good offensive linemen who I would really like to take. So a quick look at the draft board. We have a left tackle who's going to be very good, another left tackle who will be okay, and this center, who I might actually take now, because he's probably going to be gone by the time we pick again. And there's no one else who I really want with this pick. So I think I'm going to go with Wesley Mitchell, even though this left tackle will be a higher overall, most likely, or at least the same overall. I'm going to go with Mitchell, because this guy's supposed to go early fourth, Whereas this guy's supposed to go early second. So welcome to the team, Wesley Mitchell. He's a 75 overall, which is nice, but sadly he only has normal development. But he's still a really good looking center, so he's certainly going to be starting for us. And now in the late second round, I'm going to take that left tackle. And then I think the offensive line is pretty much set to go. I don't really think there's anything else I need on the team either. Like we filled a lot of the holes in free agency, so I'm not really too worried about any other position in particular. But here, Tyler Romero, welcome to the team. He's a 75 with normal as well. So he's exactly the same as the center, but they're still going to start for us because they are much better uh, than who we had starting and the options we have right now. In the third round, I think I'm going to take a strong safety if he's available. He is not available, but there is a right tackle. Quinn Armstrong. So I'll take this guy, but I don't think he'll start. He can just be a backup for us. I'm okay with that. 70 overall normal development. Rank number 41, took him at number 89. He's not a bad player at all. Our next pick here now is in the late fourth round. I'm going to take one player just completely based on like combine grade and whatnot, and then we're going to simulate to the end of the draft. So let me just look for some random player who I can take. Maybe a defensive tackle. I mean, this guy's going to be probably the best option right now. And he's not going to be any, like very good. He's going to be somewhere in the 60s. I hate this. Since I saw that spider, I just keep thinking there's like a spider on me. I don't know if you guys have that same feeling. But whenever I see a bug, even if I get rid of it, I just think there's just one on me at all times. And it just freaks me out. But I don't really know who to take with this pick. Let's just go with um, some random dude. Actually, I'm going to do this, right? I did this in the most recent draft in my CFM rebuild with Headstrong. I did this for one of the people drafting. So I'm just going to ask Siri to pick a random number between 1 and 330. And we're going to take this player, okay? Whatever the player is ranked, it doesn't matter. We're going to take him. Siri, pick a number between 1 and 330. It's 149. So 149. That's who we're going to take with this pick right now. Let's go find him. This dude's going to be a god. I guarantee it, okay? This guy's going to be so good. Ranked 149. Should we make it a rule that we have to start this guy? No. <laughs> I'm not going to start him. But he is definitely going to be on the team. I'm going to guess he is going to be a 59 overall he's a 56 overall look at this man he can run a little bit that's all he can do so sadly we didn't get any like good development trait players but i do think this draft went really well we got two 75 overall players and a 70. i told you it was going to be very offensive lineman heavy and our first three picks went to the offensive line but that's honestly all i think we need right now uh, let me check out the rest of the draft, though. I forgot to do that. There were a couple of good, like, edge rushers in this class. I would have loved to take them, but there was no way I was going to be able to. But who is the best player in the class? It's a 79 overall running back, Jaleel Harris. 94 speed for this player. Hidden development. That guy looks really good. 77 overall cornerback with 95 speed and a bunch of 76s. So Kyle Perry was the one edge rusher I was talking about. He looked really good. This guy isn't really much of an edge rusher. He would have been nice on the team to play defensive tackle potentially. But let me advance by now. Let me get the team all ready and then I'll go over it. I think I'm actually going to change the playbook up a little bit because for some reason Patrick Mahomes isn't playing as well as I want him to play. We currently have a West Coast spread offense. I swear I changed that to vertical zone run. I'm going to change it to vertical zone run for now. We actually have the same playbooks. That's why Patrick Mahomes isn't doing anything. I changed these before and I guess they didn't save. When I switch the coach, I think that's what happened. So we're going to go with the Titans playbook. And then we are going to go with uh, the Browns defensive playbook. Okay, so that's what happened. That's why the offense was a bit weird. The running backs were still playing well. So it seems like the Chiefs offensive playbook 
caters to running backs quite well. But Patrick Mahomes wasn't doing well with it. It was very strange. But anyway, here's a look at the team. We have an 87 overall, 91 offense, 84 defense. Patrick Mahomes, of course, is still on the team. Is going to be on the team for a really long time. He still has great options to throw the ball to. Nothing really changed. The only real difference on the offense in terms of like Patrick Mahomes' options is that Edwards Alaire is going to get a lot more play time because he is going to be the number one running back. And then the offensive line changed. The center and the left tackle are both different. Travis Kelsey, though, is still on the team at tight end. And then defensively, it looks like this. We have Chidobe Awuzie now at the number one cornerback position. He is a massive upgrade for us. Hopefully he can go off here. Sheldon Rankins is at defensive tackle number one. He's also a really big upgrade. I'm going to try to cut Anthony Hitchens one more time, see if anything changed. And we still can't cut him. Okay, I'm going to try to release him maybe at the end of this next season. I think that might work pretty well. But the team looks good. Honestly, I think this team can make it to the playoffs, especially with the playbook changes now. So the team here at week nine is still playing well. 4-2-1 right now travis kelsey needs to come back to the team he's going to be expensive we are not in first place though five and two for the chargers and then the raiders and the broncos are both at the bottom of the division not playing very well but let's check out what the team looks like right now with the upgrade points and whatnot so edwards alaire is up a little bit he's up to an 85 rondell moore is up to an 84 the left side of the offensive line is looking a bit better as well and then defensively this is what it looks like a bit different in terms of overalls I'm not sure if this is going to be the final season we go. It might be because this has already been very successful. Honestly, just because it is the Chiefs. Like, <laughs> I didn't really expect anything else. This was kind of supposed to be like a chilled, relaxed rebuild. Maybe try to draft some guys, you know, around Patrick Mahomes. But how much money do we have? We should actually have a decent bit. We actually don't have much at all. So I don't know if all these players are going to come back to the team or not. I'm actually going to sim to the end of the year, I think. And then worry about them later because I might not even go another season. So maybe we don't even need them. Okay, so we made the playoffs, but just barely, which is very sad. Um, I don't know how this team went 8-7-1. Certainly thought they would do better. But 9-7 for the Chargers, 6-10 for the Broncos, 4-12 for the Raiders. Let's well, see that Patrick Mahomes have a better season with this playbook. He absolutely did. 4,725 yards, 31 touchdowns, 14 interceptions. Still a lot of interceptions, to be honest, but really good yard number, really good touchdown number. Edwards Alaire, over 1,000 yards, 11 touchdowns. He had a good season as well, being the number one running back. Receiving-wise, Rondell Moore was insane. 100 catches, 1,300 yards, 9 touchdowns. Travis Kelsey was very good. Tyreek Hill, almost 1,000 yards. Even Mecole Hardman had a good season with 720 yards down there. The offensive line blocked incredibly well, which is what I like to see. Defensively, we have 106 tackles for Charvarius Ward. We have 17 tackles for loss for Breland Speaks. 13 for Frank Clark, 13 for Sheldon Rankins. Not much pressure, sadly, but 5.5 sacks for Frank Clark leads the team there. 3 picks for Tyron Matthew, 1 for Willie Gay, and 1 for Juan. On Thornhill. We have no touchdown safeties or blocked kicks, but we are second in the NFL on offense. I'm so happy that Patrick Mahomes finally threw for a ton of yards. And then we were 25th on defense. Okay. So Deshaun Watson's going to win MVP, and the Colts technically went undefeated, but they did tie. So it's a pretty strange looking record, but they're insane with Trevor Lawrence. That is nutty. But Patrick Mahomes at number six, like to see him up there. AFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Trevor Lawrence. Patrick Mahomes, though, at number three. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Drew Tranquil. Nobody from the Chiefs on this list. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Brody Davidson. Nobody from the Chiefs on this list. Defensive Rookie of the Year is Jawan Cole. But we do have Anthony Sams. No idea who that is at number six. Best quarterback is Trevor Lawrence. Patrick Mahomes, though, at number four. Best running back is Joe Mixon. But we do have Clyde Edwards-Alaire at number eight. Best wide receiver is Rondell Moore. Love to see him up there for that. Tyreek Hill at number 10 as well. Best offensive lineman. The top three are all Colts players. That's nutty. <laughs> Anybody from the Chiefs? We have Mitchell Schwartz at number five. Best defensive lineman is J.J. Watt. A bunch of Colts players on this list as well. They signed Jadavion Clowney. Makes sense that they are insane right now. Best linebacker goes to Juwan Bentley. Nobody from the Chiefs. Best defensive back is Denzel Ward. Nobody from the Chiefs. Best kicker, though, is Justin Tucker. Harrison Butker is in there at number 10, making the coach name very proud. Um, but let's spend these experience points and see if we can take down the Chargers. I'm going to simulate by the first two games here, if we win them both, of course. And then I'll go into the conference championship game if we can make it there. But let's see what the Chargers overall is. They're in 85 and we are in 88. Okay, so we should certainly be able to win this game, but the Chargers are really, really good in Madden Simulation for some reason. We do win that game 45-20, to 20, but now we have to take on the 15-0-1 Indianapolis Colts. We're not going to win this game. I feel like there's almost no chance we do, but let's go to the conference championship. Is there any way we are in that game? 
We are not. 42 to 21, we lose. That sucks. We made it so close to the Super Bowl the past two seasons, then we actually made it the first season, so I'm okay with this rebuild. The Giants and the Colts are in Super Bowl 56, and the winner is going to be the Giants, 31 to 13, actually very surprising. But I still think this rebuild was a success. It's kind of difficult to build really cool looking teams when the team is already really good, because most of the time, the players you get to progress over the course of these rebuilds are drafted players, and it's difficult to get really good drafted players when you're on a good team, because then you always get a bad draft pick. That's just kind of what happens. But anyway, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed this one, and I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye. Dad.